The following is a production of the Atomo Radio Group Sports Network. Atomo Bulldog Basketball is coming your way. On your news and information leader, 1240 AM and 102.7 FM KBIZ. Now, let's get you to the court with the voice of your Atomo Bulldogs, Jason Van Arkel. Atumwa High Basketball is on the air. Good evening, everybody. From Evans Middle School, the home of the Bulldogs. Jason Van Arkel reporting. Annie Argo, the on-site video producer. Kyle Smith, the radio producer, back at the KBIZ studios. Been a long time since we did a home broadcast of basketball. 42 days to be exact. But tonight, Atumwa's back home. The Bulldog girls and boys in Iowa Alliance Conference action taking on their old rivals, Des Moines East. In the girls' matchup tonight, your Bulldogs come in at 4-5, and five, coming off a very frustrating game on the road Tuesday night, losing 37-32 at Ames. On paper, Ames was a team that some thought they could beat, even though the Bulldogs were on the road and playing the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Ames, however, took advantage of the Bulldogs' fatigue, pressing and harassing OHS all night. The offense never really got on track, and while Ottumwa's defense was solid for the final three quarters, a first quarter surge gave the Little Cyclones a lead they would never completely relinquish. After the game, Coach Joe Vandenberg reminded his team of how far they've come, noting that a five-point road loss last year would have almost been considered a success. Tonight, Ottumwa enters in girls' hoops a three-game get-well stretch. You face East tonight, who is winless. Next Tuesday at home, you get 4-8 and eight Waterloo East. And then a week from tonight on the road at Hoover, a one-win team which Ottumwa beat soundly earlier this season. The Bulldogs feel like they let one get away on Tuesday, but they also feel like they can build up a three-game winning streak before a tougher stretch later in January, having to face Washington, Des Moines North, and Mason City. Now, as for the Des Moines East Scarlets, they are 0-11. Head coach Matt Ellis is in his third season, and he has had a rough go of it. He's 1-46 here in his third season. Now we've detailed the past few seasons how far the East program has fallen since winning a state championship in 2011 when they dominated the old CIML Metro Conference for most of the previous decade. And we feel bad mentioning it, but it's just a talent question. And East has become kind of what Des Moines North was like for many years. And it's kind of ironic how North has risen to the top of the conference while East has slid to the bottom. The Scarlets suffered a shutout this year at the hands of Urbandale, and they've only managed single-digit points in four other games, including a 62-9 loss to Fort Dodge on Tuesday. East has only topped the 30-point mark once all year. They lost 55-47 against Hoover, and their rematch with Hoover at home next month might be their only realistic chance of avoiding a second winless season in the past three years. They did beat Hoover a year ago, and so they're looking forward to that matchup. Now, this Ottumwa group doesn't usually put up a gigantic margin of victory when they play teams like this. In fact, East actually averaged 30 points in their two games against the Bulldogs last year. However, if Ottumwa is anywhere near uh, what we expect out of this Bulldog team, there's no reason to believe this game will be particularly close either. We are just getting started here on our... Friday night basketball doubleheader broadcast here at Evans Middle School. Right now we'll take a three-minute timeout, come back and tell you about the two meetings between Ottumwa and East last year. That comes your way next on the Ottumwa Radio Sports Network. Are you looking for someone to capture the special moments in life, such as senior photos, weddings, family portraits, baby pictures, or even your furry friends? Look no further than Lee's Photography in Ottumwa to schedule your appointment. Brian, Connie, and the staff at Lee's Photography have the knowledge and experience to capture your special moments and make your vision come to life. Visit them on Facebook to see the range of their work. Lee's Photography on East 2nd Street, across from the Courier in Ottumwa. For all your all-around photography needs. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. 
roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels like home. Get the small town charm with real world experience at William Penn University. Located in beautiful Oskaloosa, Iowa, William Penn is the perfect place to pursue your higher education. We offer a diverse selection of majors, including a four year nursing degree, and our state of the art facilities offer the latest technology. With small class sizes and affordable tuition, William Penn is a great place to call home. Invest in your future at William Penn. Visit wmpenn.edu today to learn more and enroll. Hi everyone, this is Karina Drummond with Reflection Studio in Ottumwa. We are a full service salon offering hair, nail, brow, lash, facial, and waxing services. We also handle weddings, proms, and other large events with multiple person makeover sessions. So contact us early to get booked for your next event. We thank all of our loyal customers for your patronage and invite all newcomers to join our salon family. And remember, looking good doesn't happen by chance. It happens by appointment with Reflection Studio in Ottumwa. Like Reflection Studio on Facebook and visit ReflectionStudio.com. That's Reflections with a Z. Some Ohio basketball on KBIZ and on the live video stream. Bulldogs at home, girls and boys taking on Des Moines East and Iowa Alliance Conference action. Last year, your Tumwa girls swept Des Moines East. The first uh, matchup was here at Evans Middle School. Tumwa won at 48-29. Then in the rematch on January 11th of last year, Tumwa beat East again 54-33. So OHS swept East comfortably, but not dramatically. Camden Kraus had double-digit points in both games, and Maya Fuller led OHS with 15 points in the second meeting. Now, going back to the 2006-2007 season, East still leads the series 22-8. The Scarlets won 18 in a row against OHS between 2007 and 2017, but the tide turned in the 2019-2020 campaign, and Atumwa has now won the last six meetings. Taking a look at the conference standings heading into tonight's matchup. Des Moines North still leads the Iowa Alliance South race in girls basketball. They're 4-0 in the division. Polar Bears are 8-3 overall. Des Moines Lincoln a half game behind at 4-1 in the division. They're a 5-7 team on the season. Roosevelt 3-1, one game back of North. They're 7-6 overall. Ottumwa sitting in fourth place at 1-3. They are 4-5 coming into tonight, of course. Hoover in fifth place at 1-4 in the conference, 1-11 overall, East 0-4 in South Division play, and they are 0-11 overall. So it's Tumwa again, it's a get well game tonight here against Des Moines East. Bulldogs just like to see some crisp execution, take advantage of the opportunities that will be presented to them, get some confidence under their belt, and try to carry that into next week when they have a couple more winnable games, and hopefully you've got a lot of momentum going into the end of the month. We'll take another three-minute timeout. Come back, check the tail of the tape and the starting lineups on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. All roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. 
We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. Hi, this is Lisa Bittner, clinic manager at Mercy One Atuma Family and Internal Medicine Clinic. We specialize in geriatrics, internal medicine, family practice, and we see patients of all ages. We have an entire pediatrics team ready to serve you year-round. We also have quick care walk-in available Monday through Friday from 7 to 5. From babies to grandparents and everything in between, we are here for you at Mercy One Atuma Family and Internal Medicine Clinic. Your best life, our one purpose. Visit mercyone.org. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels Hey, nice job clearing the clog. Thanks. You know anybody who could repair the water damage in my basement? Roto-Rooter does that. Do you guys fix water heaters? Roto-Rooter does that. How about a leaky faucet? We do that. Disposal repair? We do that. I've got to run a few errands, but if you could finish up those pies, that'd be great. Thanks. And away go troubles down the drain. Pies? Okay. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. Some more high basketball tonight from Evans Middle School on KBIZ and on the live video stream getting ready for our girls game first between Ottumwa and Des Moines East. The tale of the tape, statistical comparison between the two teams. Ottumwa is averaging 39.4 points per game. East, as we talked about, a lot of struggles this year, 13.4 points per game for the Scarlets. Ottumwa is allowing 35.3 per game. East is allowing just over 66.5. Rebounds per game, Ottumwa still pulling down a lot of rebounds, especially for an undersized team. 34.3 boards per game. East is averaging about 20 and a half rebounds a night. Ottumwa's getting 10.2 assists per game. That's decent. East averaging 2.7 assists per game. Ottumwa turning the ball over a lot less than last year. They'd still like to get the number down. It's at 16 turnovers a game right now. East turning it over a lot. 24.9 turnovers per night for the Scarlets. Shooting percentage, Ottumwa not shooting well as well as they would like at least. 29% of the season, East shooting 19.5%. Bulldogs shooting 20.8% from three-point range, East at just 9.8%. And the team similar from the free throw line, Ottumwa 44.4%, East 43.4% from the charity strike. Again, though, the Bulldogs heavy favorites tonight, not expecting a gigantic blowout. I, Again, East lost on Tuesday to Fort Dodge, 62-9. I don't think Ottumwa does that tonight, but I think the Bulldogs would like to get that point total up into the 50s, you know, something significantly above their scoring average, and, you know, hold East to somewhere around 20 points. I think Ottumwa would be happy with that. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for the visitors, Matt Ellis and his Des Moines East Scarlets. In the backcourt, five foot five junior Tab of the Hawkmuth, averaging about two and a half points and just over a rebound a game. Second guard, five foot senior Arena Tembo, averaging 3.8 points and two and a half rebounds a game. The third guard, five foot six senior Amanda Yang, averaging about a point and three and a half rebounds a game. The fourth guard, five foot six senior Diane Ziotti, averaging two and a half points and four rebounds a game. And then in the post, 5'9", senior Buani Simba, averaging 1.8 points and 4.7 rebounds per game. 
As for Joe Vandenberg's the Tumble Bulldogs in the backcourt, the five foot six sophomore point guard Camden Kraus, nine points and nearly seven rebounds a game. At the two guard, five foot five sophomore Riley Heinbaugh, just over four points and just under five rebounds a game. The third guard, five foot seven sophomore Briley Yeager, six points and four rebounds a game. And then Atum was starting two players in the post tonight. Five foot nine sophomore Hunter Caldwell, six points and five and a half rebounds a game. And then five foot eight sophomore Nelly Morgan, six points and 4.3 rebounds per game. So Atum going to the big lineup tonight. Again, East is one of the few teams Atum was going to face this season where the Bulldogs will have a size advantage. And Coach Vandenberg wanting to take full advantage of that here tonight. Scarlets have black road jerseys. And as they sit on the bench, and I'm looking at the backs of those jerseys, I can see that uh, they say Lady Scarlets on the back, the word Lady above the number, the word Scarlets below the number. The lettering white trimmed in red, the number is white trimmed in red as well. Some with their home white jerseys, red trim on the collar and the shoulders. Red lettering at Tumwa across the front, red numbers front and back, red trim on the sides of the white shorts. The front of those East jerseys, by the way, do say East in large white letters, and they've got some red trim on their collar as well. Black shorts with a diagonal red stripe across them. Scarlet's 0-11, Tumwa 4 and 5. Tumwa actually started this stretch of uh, games against sub-500 teams with their win over Burlington on Monday. And so the thought probably initially was hoping that Atumwa could get on a big, like, five-game winning streak, but losing to Ames on Tuesday maybe a short circuit of that thought. But you want to get it restarted tonight. Play well, get the win over East. Go on to that Waterloo East game next Tuesday. And then you've got Hoover on the road on Friday, a team you've already beaten soundly this season. And then the schedule does get tougher. Washington will be a tough test in a couple of weeks. Des Moines North has already beaten the Tumwa once, of course. And then Mason City, that's that game that we were originally going to play at Wells Fargo Arena. That'll be now on Saturday, the 28th of January, and that'll be here at Evans. And Mason City, they're not ranked now, I don't believe, but they were ranked in Class 4A to start the season, so that'll be another challenging game as well. All right, we are ready for the National Anthem here at Evans Middle School, and of course, they will have the Tumwa High JROTC Color Guard present the colors in midcourt, then they'll play the National Anthem, the colors will be retired, and we'll be ready for basketball. So we'll take a two-minute timeout, and when we return, we'll be just about ready for tonight's opening tip. Bulldog basketball coming your way next here on the Atumwa Radio Sports Network. At Family First Chiropractic, it is our goal to get you and your family as healthy as possible and keep you healthy for the rest of your life. We deliver an elevated level of care for the entire family. We approach healthcare from a holistic view, incorporating multiple chiropractic techniques and physical therapy to ensure that our patients achieve the best results as fast as possible. We believe you deserve the best. A little preventative care now will eliminate pain management in later years. We want our kids to grow and live an active, healthy lifestyle. Get your family checked at Family First Chiropractic. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels all roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. 
together. So let's get to know each other, because together is better. Tumble High Basketball, 12.40 a.m., 102.7 FM, KBIZ, the live video stream on the Tumble Radio Group Facebook page. Good evening once again, everybody. Jason Van Arkel here from Evans Middle School, the home of the Bulldogs. Annie Argo, the on-site video producer. Kyle Smith, tonight's radio producer back at the KBIZ studios. We are just about ready for Tumble in Des Moines East, our girls' game first and our boys' game to follow. East has already broken the huddle. There are five starters. Tabitha Hockmuth, Arena Tembo, Amanda Yang, Diane Ziotti, and Buani Simba. For Tomo Camden, Krause, Riley Heinbaugh, Briley Yeager, Hunter Caldwell, Nellie Morgan. It'll be Caldwell to jump it up against Simba. Our officials tonight, Steve Klein, Ross Hamsley, and Jeff Barnell. We're ready to go. Good to have you with us. The whistle blows, the ball in the air, the tip controlled by East. They move it left to right here in the opening half. To the front court, throwing it up top to Arena Tembo. Dribbles left, lobs it in the corner for Diane Ziotti. Down on the wing to Amanda Yang. Yang nearly lost it, going for the steal is Kraus. A whistle and a double dribble is called, and Atumwa forces an early turnover. East will turn it over a lot. That's been one of their issues this year. And now Kraus will bring it into the front court for Atumwa's opening possession. East into 2-3 zone. Right side, Briley Yeager dribbles back up top. Left side, Camden Kraus. Shot fake, drives in the lane. Kick it right wing. Heinbaugh goes up top to Yeager. Dribbles right, back to Heinbaugh. Into the corner, Caldwell. Hunter for three. Too strong. Rebound tapped out of bounds. Last touch by Nellie Morgan. It'll go back to East. Caldwell had been 4 of 5 on the season from three-point range. Now 4 of 6. Into the front court this time, Tabitha Hockmuth goes left. And had her pocket picked by Heinbaugh. They're down on the floor. We get a held ball, and the arrow favors Atumwa. Good help defense that time by Riley Heinbaugh. Again, Atumwa expected to cruise in this game. And, you know, if you're Atumwa, you want to get that big lead, be able to clear the bench in the fourth quarter, get some other girls some minutes, some development. Cross around a pick to the right side. Under heavy pressure from Tembo. Not ball knocked out of her hands and gets it back on the right side. Gets it to Jaeger up top. 16 on the shot clock. Back to Kraus right wing. Into the high post. Caldwell gets it up top to Jaeger. Right side to Kraus. Camden open for a three. Count it. Camden Kraus with the three-pointer. Brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Atumwa. Dog strike first 3 nothing. 641 and counting first quarter. Hawkmuth had her pocket picked at midcourt by Briley Jaeger. Jaeger all the way down. Right-handed layup. Good. 5 nothing Atumwa. East has yet to attempt a shot. They've turned it over three times. Hockmuth again across the timeline. Dribbles right this time. Trying to get around. Jaeger does so. Down to the baseline. Outside the lane. Cut off. Kick it out to Yang. Throws up a three. Off the glass. No good. Rebound to Heinbaugh. At least got a shot off that time. Up comes Heinbaugh to Jaeger in the front court. Throw it up top to Caldwell. Hunter goes right side to Kraus. Camden steps into a three. They left her alone off the rim, no good. Long rebound is out of bounds in the corner as Heinbaugh goes flying into the stand. She's okay. Ball goes back to East. 5.57 opening quarter. Bulldog basketball brought to you by Josh, Brenda, and the team at Meridian Credit Union where it feels like home. Tabitha Hockmuth, the 5'5 five five junior. She's played in this matchup a few times over her career. Dribbles left into the lane and lost it. Stolen by Kraus. Kraus trying to race ahead of Tenbo. The layup good. She got around Arena Tenbo and laid it in. Camden's got five. Atomo leads 7 0. Now Amanda Yang into the front court. Picked up a dribble up top. It gets it top of the key to Tembo. Steps back for a three pointer. Back iron no and over the backboard out of bounds. Bulldogs up a touchdown early. 7 0. 5 25 opening quarter. On the basketball court, of course. And now Kraus 
across the timeline through that bulldog in the midcourt circle. Dribbles over to the right side, finds Heinbaugh in the corner. Into the high post for Jaeger right side, and that's stolen. Hockmuth comes up with it, two on one the other way. Lobs it left side for Tembo, and Tembo traveled with it. That pass a little behind her. She had to reach back to corral it, tried to pivot. And now Tembo is down on the court, just outside the left block. Being helped to her feet, and East is going to get a sub in. And Tembo is up walking, but she'll be subbed out here, and we will see Damaris Norwood, a 5'5 five five sophomore. East a little shorthanded tonight. They've got 14 listed on the roster, but only eight players in uniform. Five minutes to go first quarter. It's almost seven, East nothing. Iowa Alliance Conference action tonight from Evans Middle School. Kraus. Throw it right corner for Heinbaugh. Down low to Jaeger. Jaeger got to the rim, laid it in. Briley Jaeger with a nice move. She's got four points. Nine nothing Bulldogs. Hockmuth through the midcourt circle. Picked up by Jaeger. Pass deflected. Ball is loose. Rolls out of bounds into the Atumwa bench. It'll stay with East. Jaeger knocking that pass down but couldn't corral it. Yang will throw the inbounds pass. And a lob intercepted by Nellie Morgan. Another Bulldog steal. Jaeger into the front court, top of the key, down the lane, runner, got the roll. Briley Jaeger's got six, 11-0 Bulldogs. Tab of the Hockmuth, across the timeline again. Jaeger shadows her, and Jaeger nearly had another steal. Hockmuth to the right, goes around a pick, down to the baseline. Jaeger cuts her off, goes for the steal, but she's going to get called for a reach-in foul. Well, Tum was probably going to get a few fouls tonight going for steals. They want to be aggressive. Probably gets her first. Two subs for Tumwa here. Olivia Corum and Maya Fuller check in. Heinball and Nellie Morgan sit. 4 11 to go, first quarter. Tumwa 11, Scarlet's nothing. And on the inbounds pass. We've got an offensive foul, an illegal screen called on Tab of the Hawkmuth. So that's the first foul on East. They turn it back over. Scarlet's get Arena Tembo back into the game, and Hawkmuth will sit. So here's Kraus, 4.05 to go first quarter. Top of the key, goes right side to Corum. Lob it to the high post, Fuller. Down low for Caldwell. Dribbles in, lay it up, countered in the foul. Hunter Caldwell with a chance for a three-point play. All going at Tumwa's way right now, halfway through the first quarter, 13-0. Foul charged to Buani Simba, her first team foul number two. Caldwell at the line, 39% on the season, but she hits this one to convert the three-point play. And Atoma's now got a two-touchdown lead, 14 to nothing. Yang, a lob, knocked away, and saved from going out of bounds by Caldwell, but it goes to Simba, tries to fire across the lane. Atoma tips that pass. They go back underneath the Simba, kicks it out. Three on the way, left side, Tembo off the rim, no. Rebound tapped out, and Fuller's got it. That miss was by Ziadi, not Simmons. Now long pass up ahead. Kraus behind the defense. Lay it in. Countered in the foul again. Nice pass by Maya Fuller. Give her the assist. Kraus, the hoop and the harm. She'll go to the line to shoot the free throw. 16-0. That foul on uh, Norwood, her first. Team foul number three. Camden Kraus at the line, 40% on the season. Puts it up and knocks it down. It's almost looking good from the line tonight. 17-0. East actually passed up what I thought would be a good shot in the lane to kick it out for that missed three, and that led to the Atoma breakout. And now Jaeger steps in front of a pass and steals it. Long pass ahead, cross a leaping catch, left-handed layup, got that to go. That was a tough catch, and a good job by Cross to gather herself and lay it in, give Jaeger the assist, 19-0. Tembo high on the left side for East. Dribbling against Corum, throws it high post Simba. Down the lane, left-handed layup, rolls off no good. That's the best look they've had, rebound to Fuller. Maya, long pass up ahead to Kraus again. She's double teamed outside the lane. Kick it out. Corm for a three right wing. Off the rim, no. And the rebound controlled by Ziadi. Under three to go first quarter. Ziadi picked up her dribble. Gets it high post to Simba. Trying to back down on Caldwell. Cut off. And a three-second call is... That seemed like a pretty quick three-second call to be fair to East there, but it's almost gets it back. Riley Heinball back in for Atumwa, as is Nellie Morgan. Jaeger and Caldwell sit. 2.45 opening quarter, 19-0 Atumwa.
Krause across the timeline. Throw it left side to Heinball. Against that east zone. Down to the baseline for Nellie Morgan. Morgan drives in and contact and a foul as Yang kind of lost her footing and stumbled into the leg of Nellie Morgan. And thankfully, Nellie's okay. That looked like it could have been worse. Again, not intentional. Yang just kind of lost her footing and fell on the leg of Nellie, but she's okay. First foul on Yang. Inbound to Morgan in the corner to the wing for Corum. Back in the corner. Krause an open look at a three. Count it. Camden Krause, her second three-pointer brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Ottumwa. Dogs lead 22 to nothing. Still 2.19 to go first quarter. Tembo trying to dribble left side guarded by Corum. Goes around to pick. Picked up her dribble left wing though. Doesn't know where to go with it. Now down to the block and intended for Simba. A reach in foul is called on Nellie Morgan. Her first. Team foul number two on Ottumwa. Sub for Des Moines East. Kate Stemsrud, a five foot seven junior, checks in, replacing Amanda Yang. Stemsrud, a veteran of this series. It'll be Arena Tembo to throw the inbounds pass from the baseline. Throws it to Stemsrud. Gets it up top back to Tembo. Pull up, long two-point jumper off the glass snow, and a good box out and rebound by Kraus. Kraus trying to get out of a couple defenders in the front court. Ball knocked loose, but picked up by Fuller. Throw it left corner for Heinbaugh. Riley, a baseline drive, put up the runner, couldn't get it to go. Rebound battled for a held ball as a call, although Nelly came away with it. But the arrow favors East. 150 to go here in the first. 22-0 at Tomwa. Tembo into the front court, left side, lob into the left elbow for Simba. Drives in the lane, kind of cut off, stumbles, gets it right side, stems through to baseline drive, cut off by Kraus. And another three second call as Simba didn't get out of the lane after the pass. 138 remaining in the first. Coach Vandenberg calls out the play and Kraus into the front court. Goes left side for Fuller. Fuller under pressure there, gets in the corner to Heinball. Heinball drives in, kicks it back in the corner. Three on the way from Kraus, off the rim that time, no good. Skying for the rebound is Heinball. Her pass knocked away by Stemzer. It goes out of bounds. They say a Tumwa touched it last. So East will inbound, trailing 22-0. Tambo into the front court on the right side this time. Picked up her dribble at the volleyball line. Doesn't have anywhere to go, and now Ziotti comes and gets it up top. Right wing forward to Norwood. Norwood down to the block for Simba, trying to back down on Morgan. Got the shot up off the rim, no good. Got her own rebound, the putback. I think that, well, it's tipped out of bounds off East anyway. I think that putback hit the bottom of the shot clock, which would be out of bounds. I don't think the officials saw it. I've got a better angle at that than they do, since I'm up high. But Otomo gets it back anyway. Leading 22-0, 48 seconds to go here in the first. Left side for Heinball. Up top, Kraus. Around a Morgan pick to the right side. Nearly lost it on the floor. Picks it up. Gets it to Corum in the corner. Lob it down low for Morgan. Too far underneath the hoop from there. Back out to Corum to the wing. Kraus. Wide open three. Off the rim, no. Corum's got the rebound. Kick it back out to Kraus. Underneath for Morgan. Goes up. A whistle. And a foul on East. 24.8 seconds to go in the quarter. And the Tum was back to the free throw line. That'll be on Simba, her second. Team foul number five on East. Nelly Morgan at the line, 42% on the season. First one here, good. Her first point in the night, 23-0. Substitution for East. Kalia Phoenix, a 5'8 sophomore, checks in. Replacing Simba, who sits with two fouls. Second free throw for Nelly. Got them both. It's almost five for five from the line here in the opening quarter. Make it four for four. 24 nothing. Shot clock off. Tembo in the front court. Under pressure way up high from Corum. Picked up her dribble. Doesn't know where to go with it. And tried to throw it underneath to Stemzerd. Kraus picked it off. Ten seconds. Kraus up ahead to Corum. Underneath to Morgan. Feeds it across to Fuller. Out to the left wing. Heinball for three. Off the rim. No. Heinball hit the deck. No call. Rebound by Morgan. Stripped out of bounds. One second to go. In the quarter, a Tumwa inbounding. They've got to hit something quick. Kraus looking, looking. Bounce it to Nelly in the lane. Got the shot up. Nope. 
24 nothing. back in a minute on the Atoma Radio Sports Network. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They called a foul on that. The backside official called a foul, so we'll keep it here as Nellie Morgan's going to shoot two free throws. And that's a second foul on Norwood. Nellie's first one off the rim, no. So we didn't have a perfect free throw shooting quarter after all. It's harder when nobody's on the lanes as there's no time left on the clock. Second free throw, got the roll. 25 nothing back in a minute on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. The secret is out. You're invited to see the all-new scoring system at Champion Bowl. The first bowling alley in Iowa to have the new Bowler Entertainment System. Animated and themed scoring grids and backgrounds. It keeps score for a variety of game types. There's classic bowling, of course, as well as Build the Monster, Bowling Hood, Battle of the Lanes, and more. You can also video chat with any of the staff right from your bowling station. Come experience the brand new Champion Bowl in Ottumwa, where bowling is now awesome. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people. People with goals. People who want to save more. People that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels like home. Start of the second quarter, it's somewhat 25, Des Moines East nothing in our girls game tonight. Olivia Corum has it left wing into the corner for Heinbaugh. And a reach-in foul called on Kate Stemsrud, her first. It's team foul number seven, so Heinbaugh is going to the line to shoot a one and one. Camden Krause, 13 points in that first quarter. Riley Yeager had six, Hunter Caldwell and Nellie Morgan each had three. Heinbaugh looking for her first point of the night. Got to hit the first to earn the second. Free throw up and good. Riley's on the board, 26-0. One more free throw for the left-handed shooting, Riley Heinbaugh. Puts it up. Too strong off the iron. Rebound tapped on the floor and out of bounds off of East. It'll stay with the Tumwa. Riley Yeager will inbound. Gets it to Caldwell, right wing to Corum, up top Fuller. Left corner for Jaeger, got open for a look at a three. Back iron, no. Rebound, Corum has it on the weak side, out to Caldwell. Lost it, got it back, tried to drive baseline, kick it out to Corum. To the free throw line, Jaeger down the lane with a nice move off the glass and good. Briley Jaeger's got eight. 28 nothing at Tumwa. Tembo into the front court. Keeps her dribble left side this time. Gets to the... Three-point line, puts up the shot, no good. Rebound to Heinbaugh. Riley racing into the front court, lobs it to Corum in the corner. Or, pardon me, that's Fuller. Out to the wing for Jaeger. Jaeger penetrates, kicks it up top. There's Olivia Corum, right wing, back to Fuller. Down low, knocked away from Caldwell, ball loose. Corum got it back on the, or Fuller got it back on the baseline. Skip it, left wing, Heinbaugh the jumper. No good, but the rebound underneath the Caldwell, dribbles around a defender, kicks it out to Corum, up top to Jaeger. Riley drives in, triple team, out to Corum, down to the block for Caldwell, turn around, lay it up, no, but she's fouled, and Hunter Caldwell is going back to the line. Or pardon me, no, no they called a travel first. So Atoma turns it over, and East has it back, Atoma leading 28-0. Ball goes left side for Diane Ziotti. Picked up her dribble left wing, tried to throw it up top, Fuller with the steal. Maya all the way down, Tembo contesting, layup no, but a whistle and a foul. Marina Tembo gets her first, team foul number eight, and Maya Fuller sh shooting two. 6.32 to go until halftime. So I'm leading 28-0. Fuller at the line, 60% on the season. First one here, spins out. It was halfway down and came back out. More coming up for Fuller. It's up. And short off the rim, but Jaeger gets the rebound, brings it out left wing. Skip it right side for Corum. 
Down low to Caldwell, turn around, up and under move, off the glass and good. Nice move, Hunter Caldwell. And it is 30 to nothing at Tumwa. Tembo over to the left side for East. Gets around a defender into the corner. Knocked out of her hands by Heinball. Out of bounds. Front of the dog pound. It'll stay with East. 6-10 to go until halftime. Stems Rude gets it in. High on the left side to Ziotti. And they're, oh, they called her for a double dribble. And I don't know about that call. She, she was trying to control a wayward pass. And... I've read the rules where it says if, if you, you know, reach out, just control the ball and it hits the ground, you pick it up, that's not considered a dribble. So they turned it over, but I don't know if I like the call. Three subs for Atumwa here. Nellie Morgan back in. Cameron Pauls is in for the first time. And Pauls tried to get it to Caldwell, pass deflected. Caldwell rescues it outside the lane, but a held ball is a call, and the arrow will give it back to East. Wani Simba back in for the Scarlets, replacing Ziotti. So Tomo's got Kraus, Jaeger, Pauls, Morgan, and Caldwell on the floor. Rita Tembo into the front court for the Scarlets, drives left and ball knocked out of her hands going down the lane, but a foul called on Otumwa. Riley Jaeger gets her second, team foul number three. 548 mark of the second quarter. 30 to nothing Otumwa. Inbound right side goes to Phoenix, Kalia Phoenix. Let's give it left side to Norwood, driving down to the paint, put up a shot, missed it, rebound to Kraus. Kraus wants to push tempo, lobs it up ahead, and it's saved by Pauls. Oh, they call a travel. Pauls was falling down trying to rescue that ball, but she was passing it to Morgan before she fell down. I don't know how that's a travel. So East gets it back. Five and a half to go in the half. Tembo pulls up left side, gets it on the wing to Norwood. Back up top to Phoenix. Baseball pass right side to Tembo. Tembo into the corner for Stemsrud. Baseline drive, cut off, puts up the jumper. Too strong, rebound to Briley Yeager. Briley into the front court. Throws it left side for Kraus. Kraus penetrates, puts up the runner in the lane, left it short. Morgan saves it, gets it off the glass and puts it in. Nellie Morgan... Has her first field goal. She's got five points, 32-0. And a timeout, Scarlet's 4.56 until the half, back in 30 seconds on the Atoma Radio Sports Network. All roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. You're watching the Ottumwa Bulldogs on the Ottumwa Radio Group Sports Network. Tumwa High Basketball brought to you by Mike and the team and Mike's Pizza, Tumwa's favorite place to eat. 4.56 to go until halftime. Tumwa 32, Des Moines East nothing in our girls game tonight. I said in the pregame show that I thought Tumwa would win comfortably, but historically they haven't put up gigantic margins of victory, but I am maybe proved wrong here as Tumwa has had everything go their way in the first quarter and a half. Rina Tembo for East. Nearly lost it. Throws it left side to Stemsrud. Stemsrud nearly lost it herself. Brings it back up top. Curls around to the right. And her pass knocked away. Stolen by Briley Yeager. Yeager trying to get ahead of two defenders. Nice jump stop in the lane. The shot though rolls off the rim. Kraus the rebound fouled on the putback and Camden Kraus will shoot two. Foul is on Kate Stemsrud, her second. Team foul number nine on East. Kraus at the line, 13 points in the game. One for one from the line so far tonight. First free throw. This trip is good. Give her 14. 33 nothing. Second free throw on the way. 
and she got them both. 15 points for Kraus, 34 0 at Tumwa. Left side, down outside the lane, now backing up Tembo. Picked up for dribble, throws it up top, stolen by Cameron Pauls. Pauls slows it up across midcourt, gets it left side for Caldwell. Back up top to Jaeger. Riley had it poked out of her hands, gets it back on the right side. Gets it to Pauls on the wing. Into the corner, Kraus, open for another three. Count it. Camden Kraus with her third three pointer, brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Ottumwa. 37 0 Ottumwa, four minutes to go until halftime. Up high is Tembo. Try to throw it left side for Simba, knocked out of bounds on the far side by Nellie Morgan. He still maintained possession. It'll be Stems Rude to throw the inbounds pass. And a lob. Up top in the corner for Tembo. Throw it top of the key, rescued by Phoenix. Phoenix dribbling back left, now going back right, guarded by Caldwell. And they're gonna get Hunter Caldwell for a hand check. That is the first foul on Hunter, team foul number four on Atumwa. 3.44 left in the half. I say that's her second foul. I'm not sure I had the first. Inbound comes to Damaris Norwood. Right side, Caldwell gets the steal. Two on two the other way. Caldwell down the left side, pulls up, fires it underneath to a wide open Nellie Morgan who lays it up and in. Nice job by Caldwell to get it under control and find her cutting teammate Morgan. 39-0. Seven points for Morgan. Someone's about to do a line change. They've got five subs at the table. Ball knocked loose. Loose on the floor, picked up by Caldwell. Under a lot of pressure from Siamba, too much pressure, that'll be her third foul. Team foul number 10, so Caldwell's going to the line to shoot two. Caldwell at the line, one for three on the night. She's got five points so far. 3.13 to go until the half. First free throw this time, good. So four of the five subs can check in right now. We've got Riley Heinbaugh, Maya Fuller, Olivia Corum, Veda Monahan in for the first time, the five foot eight junior. East will bring back Tabitha Hockmuth to replace Simba who sits with her third foul. One more free throw for Caldwell, 40 to nothing at Tomwa. It's up. And in and out, no good, but Monaghan the rebound underneath. Kick it out to Corum. Into the right corner for Monaghan. Underneath for Caldwell. Backing down, goes up, draws another foul. No, wait, they've got Caldwell for the offensive foul. I thought maybe she pushed off. The whistle didn't come right away. And they say that's her third foul. But I've got five fouls on a ton when I've only got Caldwell with two. Caldwell does check out, and Emma Hunger is in, the six-foot-one sophomore. And Hockmuth over to the right side, but an illegal screen is called on Kate Stemsrud. That is her third foul. No free throws on an offensive foul, but Atomo gets it back, 259 to go until halftime. So East has two players with three fouls. They say that Caldwell has three fouls for Atomo. I, I've only got her with two. Heinball has it left wing, down to the baseline for Hunger. Hunger gets it to the block for Fuller, out to Heinball, left wing three, off the, nope, short, but rebound to Monaghan underneath, kick it out to Corum, to the elbow, Fuller tries the jumper, short, long rebound is run down by Fuller in the right corner, skip it to the left block for Hunger, out on the wing to Heinball, Riley drives in, puts up the shot off the glass, no, rebound tipped to Fuller, Toma resets again, Corum a three on the way, count it! Olivia Corum with their first bucket of the night, a three-pointer brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Atomwa, 43-0. Heinball was going for a steal there, but they stopped play. They'll, I think they were resetting the shot clock. And so East will inbound again, 2.22 to go until the half. Atomwa leading 43-0. Tembo through the midcourt circle. Tries to cross over, Corum poked it out of her hands. Tembo got it back and then stumbled between defenders and is called for traveling. 
43-0. Now, the running clock rule is 35 points or more, but it doesn't begin until the second half. However, unless East scores nine consecutive points to end this half, we will start the second half with the running clock. Skip it left wing for Corum into the corner. Heinball, she'll try a three. Off the iron, no good. Hunger, the rebound underneath, the putback good. Emma Hunger has her first bucket of the season. 45-0 at Tumwa. Tembo crosses over to the right side. Down the lane, lost it on the floor. Corum trying to get it back. Tembo was on, on the floor with her back to the ball. She managed to reach behind her and force a tie-up, but the arrow will give it to Atomwa. Still, give Arena Tembo some credit there, fighting for that basketball even though it was behind her. Now Corum into the front court, left side for Heinbaugh. Into the lane, Fuller out right side to Monahan. Her jumper off the iron, no good, and the rebound to Stemsrud. Pass up ahead, hit Hunger in the back. It goes to Norwood. Fuller tried to steal it. Norwood right wing to the elbow. Throw it across to the other elbow for Tembo, and Tembo traveled. The pivot was okay, and Tembo hit the shot after the pivot. The problem was she pivoted, and then she picked up the pivot foot before the shot. The move actually got her open, but she needed to shoot right away and did not. Now Corum, right side for Monahan into the high post. Fuller underneath for Hunger, off the rim and good. Emma Hunger, second bucket, 47 0. 105 to go. Tembo to the left side in the corner for Hockmuth. Poked out of her hands, it goes out of bounds in the corner. It'll stay with East. Seeing some activity down in the corner. Looks like the dog pound's going to set up a pseudo ESPN Sports Center desk down there for the boys game tonight. Hawkmuth back to the top of the key, shadowed closely by Heinbaugh. Picked up a dribble on the right wing. Lob it into the lane, tough catch by Norwood. Gets it across the stems, where her shot short, rebound to Corum. Up ahead to Heinbaugh. 43 seconds to go. Right side to a running Emma Hunger who lays it in. Hunger running the floor and she's rewarded. Heinbaugh the assist. 49-0. About a second difference between shot clock and game clock. Pass deflected, stolen by Heinbaugh. Now the shot clock's off. Heinball, though, racing into the front court. Fired ahead, intended for Corum, and a nice job by Kalia Phoenix for East to jump in the passing lane and knock it out of bounds. Someone could hold for one here if they wanted. Corum lobs the inbound off the hands of Hunger, and it's picked up by Norwood. She's into the front court. Heinball trying to catch up. Norwood controlling it. Now it's had to save it back to Hockmuth left wing. 15 seconds left in the half. Underneath the stem, Drew, turnaround jumper, no. Got her own rebound, but it's loose on the floor. She picks it up, and it's tied up between Stemsrud and Emma Hunger, and the arrow will keep it with East. 7.4 seconds to go until the half. Someone leading 49-0. Stemsrud to throw the inbounds pass. Goes right side for Phoenix. And it's knocked away by Corum. Rolls into the backcourt. Corum saves it. She's got a second and throws it away as time expires. But... What a half for Otumwa. They lead Des Moines East 49 to nothing. So we'll take three minutes, come back, and begin the halftime show on the Otumwa Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier together. So let's get to know each other, because together is better. Hey, it's Sam here, your Lisco sales rep. Summertime weather is just around the corner, so you know the drill. Construction is in full swing, and we have limited time to get your order on the list for this year. As you're prioritizing your goals for 2022, let's make you the priority. We can chat details about what would make your home or business data connection the most successful. To add or update your services, call me, Samantha Newell, for your Lisco sales and account management. 641-209-5400-209-5400, or visit us at lisco.com. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels 
Hi, this is Vince Tyson, General Manager with Citizens Mutual in Bloomfield, the area's premier broadband provider. Buffalo County, we have heard your screams of frustration. You need reliable internet, and we are proud to expand high-speed fiber internet into Wapolo County. Express your interest today by going to findmyfiber.mycmtech.com. Again, that's findmyfiber.mycmtech.com. We look forward to hearing from you and bringing you the very best internet service at Citizens Mutual, coming soon to Wapolo County. County. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. Get the small town charm with real world experience at William Penn University. Located in beautiful Oskaloosa, Iowa, William Penn is the perfect place to pursue your higher education. We offer a diverse selection of majors, including a four year nursing degree, and our state of the art facilities offer the latest technology. With small class sizes and affordable tuition, William Penn is a great place to call home. Invest in your future at William Penn. Visit wmpenn.edu today to learn more and enroll. You're watching the Atumbo Bulldogs on the Atumbo Radio Group Sports Network. We are at halftime at Tumble High Basketball, 1240 AM, 102.7 FM KBIZ, the live video stream on the Atumbo Radio Group Facebook page. And at the half in our girls' game tonight, we knew it would be a, uh, an, a we knew it would be an Atumwa comfortable win tonight. But I did not foresee this. Atumwa leading Des Moines East at the half, 49 to nothing, and that is not a mistake. 49 to nothing. Scoring in the first half, it's all Atumwa's. Camden Krause leads with 18 points. Riley Yeager has eight. Nellie Morgan has seven. Six for Hunter Caldwell. Six points for Emma Hunger. Three points for Olivia Corum and one point for Riley Heinbaugh. Foul trouble in the game. Des Moines East has two players with three fouls. Kate Stemsrud and Bawani Simba. Damaris Norwood has two fouls. For Atomwa, I've got Riley Yeager and Hunter Caldwell with two fouls each. Uh, the scoreboard announced Caldwell having three fouls. It's not a big deal in a game of this uh, scoreline, obviously, but we'll see if that uh, discrepancy continues into the second half. But... Free throw shooting, East did not go to the line in the first half. But someone was pretty good from the line. Let's see one. They made nine free throws in that first half. Nine of 16 from the line. The, the percentage, not outstanding, but above 50%. They've not been a 50% free throw shooting team this year. Camden Krause hit all three of her free throws. Nellie Morgan was three of four from the line. Some, some encouraging performances from the free throw line from a couple of Atumwa's big time players. And again, all Atumwa in the first half leading 49 to nothing. So what should we expect in the second half? Well, I imagine we'll see a lot more of the Atumwa bench. Cameron Pauls and Emma Hunger both got some extended first half playing time that we haven't seen a lot of this year. Veda Monahan did as well. Atumwa doesn't have a lot of players to bring in off the bench. The roster only has 11 players, and so far we've seen, just going numerically, we've already seen Corum, Pauls, Krause, Hunger, Monahan, Fuller, Heinbaugh, Caldwell, Jaeger, and Morgan. The only player on the bench we haven't seen is Olivia Clark. Should mention, of course, that uh, Sydney Rockhold would be there except for her preseason injury that has her out for the season. But. I would expect to see as the second half goes on, Olivia Clark will probably get in and get a lot of playing time. We'll see um, ex some extended playing time for a lineup that would include at the same time the, the players we don't hear from a lot. Pauls, Hunger, Monahan, Clark, and then pick one of your regular sophomores to fill out the five players on the floor for a Tumwa. And I guess I don't know if uh, in anticipation of clearing the bench tonight. I don't know if Coach Vandenberg maybe dressed any of the JV players that haven't been dressing varsity. We'll find out, but 
At any rate, Atonwa's got a big lead, 49-0, over to Moyne East at the half. That'll do it for the halftime show. We'll take three minutes and come back for the start of the second half on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels like home. Wondering what to have for lunch or supper? Stop in and see Mike and his team at Mike's Pizza and Steakhouse. Whether you want amazing Greek food, pasta, salads, sandwiches, fish, chicken, steak, or the best pizza in town, they have what you want. They are always open for carryout, and their full menu is available at mikespizzasteakhouse.com. Thank you, Southern Iowa, for making Mike's Pizza and Steakhouse your favorite restaurant and your favorite pizza place. Proud to support the Atumwa Bulldogs. Opa! Are you looking for someone to capture the special moments in life, such as senior photos, weddings, timely portraits, baby pictures, or even your furry friends? Look no further than Lee's Photography in Ottumwa to schedule your appointment. Brian Connie and the staff at Lee's Photography have the knowledge and experience to capture your special moments and make your vision come to life. Visit them on Facebook to see the range of their work. Lee's Photography on East 2nd Street, across from the Courier in Ottumwa. For all your all-around photography needs. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. Roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels Getting ready for the start of the second half. Tumwa High Basketball on 1240 AM, 102.7 FM KBIZ. The live video stream on the Tumwa Radio Group Facebook page. Good evening once again, everybody. Jason Van Arkel with you from Evans Middle School. Andy Argo, the on-site video producer. Kyle Smith, the radio producer tonight back at the KBIZ studios. At the half, the score is correct. It's Tumwa 49, Des Moines East nothing in our girls game tonight. Atoma will have its starting five out on the floor to start the second half. I don't expect that to last for extremely long. Ken McCrouse, Riley Heinbaugh, Riley Yeager, Hunter Caldwell, Nellie Morgan. East with Tabitha Hockmuth, Arena Tembo, Amanda Yang, Diane Ziotti, and Bonnie Simba. Bulldogs had the ball moving left to right in the second half. East in a 2-3 zone. Ball goes in the lane to Yeager. Out to Heinbaugh for three. Off the rim, no. Weak side rebound to Caldwell. Fouled on the putback, and Hunter will shoot two. See who the foul is on here. They will get Amanda Yang for her second. Caldwell at the line, six points in the first half. First free throw this trip is too strong. Hunter now two of six from the line in the game. Second free throw for the sophomore, good. 
and it's 50 to nothing. Tembo into the front court for the Scarlets. Left side, Ziotti. Trying to drive down to the baseline, cut off, kick it back out to Tembo, gets a look at a three, off the rim, no, rebound tapped. Simba has it. Try to get it to Tembo, had to go down, Onita pick it up, ball still loose, and Kraus has it. Long pass up ahead, Heinbaugh rescues it, left-handed layup, good. Riley Heinbaugh has her first field goal, three points now in the game, 52-0. Simba throws it left side and a steal for Heinbaugh. Going back down against Simba, left-handed layup, countered in the foul. Riley Heinbaugh with a chance for a three-point play. And that'll be the fourth foul on Bwani Simba. 54 to nothing pending the free throw. Riley's free throw too strong and the rebound tipped to Temba. East wanted to get Simba out of there, couldn't do it in time. And now a pass inside knocked away by Nellie Morgan out of bounds and that will allow East to make the substitution. Kalia Phoenix checks in. Running clock is in effect, obviously, 54-0. Yang will throw the inbounds pass. Goes right side through the hands of Tembo. She manages to get back to the top of the key. Goes around left side, pull up jumper left side, off the rim, no. Weak side rebound to Yang. Her jumper from the baseline, no good, but the putback by Phoenix, no good. Weak side rebound to Ziadi. Kick it out to Hockmuth on the baseline. Picked up her dribble, doesn't have anywhere to go with it, and gets it outside to Tembo. Temple back up top, lob it left side for Ziotti. Back in the wing to Yang, skip it right side for Tembo. Don't win a man to man. Down to 10 on the shot clock, a whistle and a three second violation on East. At least had a few looks at cracking the scoreboard there, didn't happen. Folks, we're not rooting for a shutout. I feel bad that East has already been shut up by Urbandale this year. Tomo leading 54-0. Ball goes right side for Jaeger. One of the entry pass to Morgan. Not there. Now she drives in. Cut off. Goes baseline for Nelly. Nelly underneath. Got to the rim. Lay it up. No, but a whistle and a foul. And Morgan will shoot two. That shot was halfway down and bounced out. Diane Ziotti gets her first foul. Team foul number three. Nelly Morgan at the line. Three for four so far tonight. First free throw this trip. A little too strong. One more for the sophomore post player, Nellie Morgan. Puts it up, left it short, and the rebound to Phoenix. Up ahead to Tembo in the front court left side. Backs away, throws it up top for Yang. Yang goes right side for Hockmuth. Hockmuth will try a three-pointer. Rebound on the weak side to Kraus. Camden looks up ahead, finds a running Nellie Morgan down the lane, lay it up good. Beautiful pass from half court by Camden Kraus. Nellie Morgan with nine points, 56 0. Kraus has 18 points, but has been looking more to distribute than score ever since that 13 point first quarter. Ball goes right corner to Yang. She'll try the jumper. It's short. Rebound tapped out of bounds by Atumwa. It'll stay with East. Olivia Corm and Maya Fuller coming in for the Scarlets. Krause and Caldwell will check out. Clock rolls under five minutes to go in the third. Yang, her pass intended for Tembo. It's intercepted by Jaeger, and Briley double dribbled. She dribbled it over to the sideline, picked it up, and started dribbling again. Back to the Scarlets, counting down to four and a half to go on the running clock, third quarter. 56 0 at Tumwa, inbound to Hockman. Lob into the high post. Nellie Morgan knocks it away with a steal. Nellie all the way down against Hockmuth. Goes up, lay it up and in. Morgan into double digits with 11. 58 0. Back the other way is Tembo, top of the key. Takes it right side to the elbow. Back up top for Ziotti. Left side for Yang. Yang tried to throw back in the lane, knocked away. Hockmuth rescues it up top for East. Goes right side to Tembo. Tembo lost the dribble, picked up by Fuller. Fuller has her pocket pick from behind by Tembo, who gets it back. 
Throws it ahead to Yang. Yang across the timeline left side, down to the corner. Tough catch for Phoenix. Turnaround three-pointer on the way off the glass. No, rebound to Tembo in the lane. Lost it going up, off the rim, no. Rebound to Morgan. Now he gets it to Briley Yeager. Briley into the front court. Left side for Heinbaugh as the Bulldogs spread it out. Up top to Yeager, right side to Corm. Open for a three, off the rim, no. Rebound to Ziotti. Back the other way, Diane Ziotti through the midcourt circle. Throw it right side for Phoenix. Phoenix down the lane, pull up jumper, no good. Yang saves the rebound, but it goes to Fuller. Up ahead to Corum. Dogs want to run again. Three on two. Corum top of the key, pulled up and traveled. Nobody was looking for a pass there, and Olivia kind of got caught in between. Veda Monahan back in for Otumwa, replacing Briley Yeager. Under three to go in the third quarter. Hockmuth at the volleyball line. Throws it right side for Yang. Yang looked underneath, nobody was there. Goes up top, Ziotti. Ziotti back to Yang on the right. Back up top, Tembo. Three on the way, top of the key. Off the rim, no. Ziotti the rebound underneath. Kick it out to Hockmuth. Her three-pointer, no good. Rebound tipped and Corum has it. Bulldogs want to run again. Up ahead, Morgan behind everybody. All the way down, Nelly lay it up and in. 13 for Nelly Morgan. And it is 60 to nothing at Tumwa. Now Hawkmuth, a lob intended for Phoenix underneath, off her fingertips and stolen by Corum. Up ahead to Fuller left side. Fuller down to the block for Heinbaugh, turn around high off the glass and good. Riley Heinbaugh has six in the quarter, seven in the game, 62 to nothing. Tembo, pull up three, top of the key, off the glass and rim, no good, almost banked it in. Rebound to Fuller, up ahead to Corum. Corum, all the way down on the run, lay it up and in. Five for Corum, 64 to nothing, or 62. Minute and a half to go, third quarter. Hockmuth over to the right, and she is fouled as she tried to split defenders. Kate Stemsrud about to check in for East. Heinbaugh charged with the foul, her first. First foul to half on Atumwa. Running clock down to a minute 10 to go as East gets ready to inbound. Inbound to Tembo, brings it back between the circles. Throw it left side for Yang. Back to Tembo, left wing three. No good, out of bounds, back to Atumwa. Cameron Pauls and Emma Hunker about to check back in for OHS. Also, it would seem that they're not, they don't operate the shot clock when the running clock is in effect. I just noticed that. No, they do turn it on. It was off until they inbound it. Corm goes left side for Monahan. Monahan down low to Hunger. They double team her in the post, kick it out to Monahan in the corner. Up top, Corum had to rescue it. Back to Monahan, left wing. About a second difference between shot clock and game clock. Paul's in the lane to Hunger. Pivots on the right side. Kick it out to Fuller. Fuller drives around Yang. Pull up jumper. No good. Short rebound to Yang. Eight seconds to go in the quarter. Yang up ahead to Hockmuth. Hockmuth trying to drive on Paul's. Cut out. Kick it out to Yang. To the free throw line. Stems root at the buzzer. No. 62 nothing. Back in a minute on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. Get the small town charm with real world experience at William Penn University. Located in beautiful Oskaloosa, Iowa, William Penn is the perfect place to pursue your higher education. We offer a diverse selection of majors, including a four-year nursing degree. And our state-of-the-art facilities offer the latest technology. With small class sizes and affordable tuition, William Penn is a great place to call home. Invest in your future at William Penn. Visit wmpenn.edu today to learn more and enroll. 
Hi everyone, this is Karina Drummond with Reflection Studio in Ottumwa. We are a full service salon offering hair, nail, brow, lash, facial, and waxing services. We also handle weddings, proms, and other large events with multiple person makeover sessions. So contact us early to get booked for your next event. We thank all of our loyal customers for your patronage and invite all newcomers to join our salon family. And remember, looking good doesn't happen by chance. It happens by appointment with Reflection Studio in Ottumwa. Like Reflection Studio on Facebook and visit ReflectionStudio.com. That's Reflections with a Z. Start of the fourth quarter, East with the ball, Ottumwa leading, it is 64 to nothing. They went back and checked that. Hawkmuth, the baseline jumper for East, no good, rebound to Fuller. Fuller racing into the front court, getting around Tembo. Tembo though pokes it away and East has a steal. Phoenix with it, nearly lost it. Phoenix dives on the floor to get it, looking to get it somebody, finally gets it to Tembo. Tembo into the front court, pull up three, no good. Weak side rebound contested, last touch by Stemdrew to East, it'll go back to OHS. Yeah, Tomo had 15 points in that third quarter, so they lead it 64 to nothing. Corum into the front court, left side for Monahan. Made him on hand down to the corner for Emma Hunger, had to rescue it. Lob it left side to Lane to Fuller, kick it right side for Corum. Olivia for three, and that ball goes out of bounds back to East. Running clock under seven minutes to go. Hawkmuth, lob into the lane, stems through the catch, the shot up off the glass and off the rim, no good, rebound to Hunger. And Hunger is fouled by Stemsrud. That'll be her fourth, team foul number four on East. Pauls gets it in to Fuller, throw a left side to Corum as Tembo was trying to apply some pressure. Up ahead to Monahan, down to the baseline for Hunger. Back out to Veda. She'll skip it to the elbow for Corm. Right side for Pauls for a three. Count it! Cameron Pauls with a three-pointer brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Ottumwa. Her first three of the season. 67-0 Ottumwa. Ball goes left side for Yang. Amanda Yang looking underneath. Not there. Skip it right side for Hockmuth. Hockmuth down to the baseline. Puts up the runner. No, but she's fouled. And East may finally get on the board from the free throw line. Olivia Corum called for her first, team foul number two. Tabitha Hockmuth at the line is a 60% free throw shooter. And East may finally get on the scoreboard here. She puts it up, knocks it down. And East has its first point. One more free throw. It's up. And no good in the rebound to Monahan. Monahan trying to get away from Stemsrud. Gets it midcourt to Fuller. Skip it left corner for Corum. Now lob it back to Fuller at the free throw line. Right side, Monahan a three. Count it! Veda Monahan with a three pointer brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Ottumwa. Her first bucket of the night, 70 to 1. Tembo to the elbow for Phoenix, right side. Turnaround jumper. In and out, no good. It's the closest they've come to sinking a bucket tonight. Should have gone down. Corum, left side for Monahan. High post Fuller. Back to Monahan in the corner. Tries another three. Off the rim, no. Corum, the rebound in the lane. Kick it out to Pauls. Her short jumper, too strong. Monahan, the weak side rebound. Kick it out off the hands of Hunger. Fuller can't save it. That is an over and back. Running clock, five minutes to go. Almost 70, East 1. Yang inbounds to Hockman. Over to the right side. Lob underneath, nice catch by Yang. The layup good. Amanda Yang has the first field goal of the night for the Scarlets. 70 to 3 the score. Right side is Pauls. The free throw line Fuller. Pass deflected, but Pauls has it right wing. She drives in the lane, pull-up jumper, high off the glass, no good. Rebound loose on the floor. 
And we get a held ball. The arrow favors a tum one. Corum will throw the inbounds pass. Lob it to the elbow for Hunger. Back to Corum in the corner. Shot fake, drives in, throw it up top, Pauls. Right side, Fuller. Down underneath, pass through the legs of Hunger and out of bounds. That pass, it either needed to be higher or needed to be a bounce pass. It was neither. Subs for a tumble. Riley Heinbaugh, Nellie Morgan check back in. You know, I said Olivia Clark might get into this game, but as I look down on the bench, I don't believe she's here tonight. So what a tum was played is who they'll have. They've got Heinbaugh, Pauls, Morgan, Hunger, and Monahan on the floor. Inside Stemsrud shot no good. Rebound to Hunger. Up ahead to Pauls. Fires ahead. Morgan behind the defense. Lay it up. Missed it. Tried to split two defenders there. Rebound to Yang. Up ahead to Tembo. Tips it ahead. Tries to control it. A whistle. And who are we going to get the foul on here? I think a tumble got a Pauls got called for the foul first. Then Tembo tried to back her way in, but they'd already called the foul on Cameron. First on Pauls, team foul number three. Inbound left side to Hockmuth. Up top, Tembo. She'll try a top of the key three. Off the rim, no. And the rebound is a held ball. Arrow favors east. 2.50 to go. Yang will throw the inbounds pass. Left side for Kalia Phoenix. Phoenix pull a baseline jumper. Short rebound to Heinbaugh. Riley up ahead, finds Monahan left wing, drives down, cut off the block, fired across, tipped away from Hunger, goes into the corner, Pauls with a three, no good, long rebound, run down by Heinbaugh. Heinbaugh bumped out of bounds by Yang, but they don't call the foul, they just say it's out of bounds back to East. I mean, I know what the score is, but that was a lot of contact. Heinbaugh ended up on the bleacher steps there. Hockmuth into the front court, 2-10 to go. Right side for Tembo, into the corner Yang, back to Tembo on the wing, drives in, cut off, spins, gets it back up top to Hockmuth. Into the lane, Stem drew, turn around off the glass, in and out, no good, but she's been unlucky a couple times tonight. Paul's with the rebound, and a reach-in foul called on Arena Tembo. Her second team foul number five. Hopefully we don't get two more fouls on East, we don't really need any more free throws tonight. 70 to three the score. Minute 35 to go. High post is Morgan. Triple team, but gets it to high mall. Left corner, Monahan another three. Count it! Veda Monahan second three, brought to you by Marvin Boyer with Shelter Insurance in Atomwa. And what, what is the whistle? They get a foul on Nellie Morgan trying to box out on a possible rebound. Her second foul, team foul number four. Minute 10 to go, 73 to three. And now Hockmuth across the timeline. Right side, guarded by Heinball. Bobs it down low for Stem. Drew, turn around off the rim, no. They're trying to get her a bucket, just can't get one to fall. Monahan with the rebound, pressured by Tembo. Gets it over to Pauls and Cameron into the front court. 45 seconds to go. High post is Morgan underneath to Emma Hunger who lays it up and in. Hunger's got eight points, 75-3. About a, a half second difference between shot clock and game clock. Kalia Phoenix left wing, drives baseline, cut off. Turn around for the jumper, too strong. Yang had the rebound, knocked away, and Morgan's got it. 20 seconds to go, and Coach Vandenberg says that's enough. East is pressuring Pauls, double teaming to go right corner for Hunger. Up top for Heinbaugh with 10 seconds. Back to Pauls. Boy, Tembo really trying to take it away to Morgan. Skip it left side, Monahan. Three seconds, two seconds. Out to Heinbaugh, and that'll do it. Final score, it's almost 75, and Des Moines East, three. Tomo evens its record at five and five. East falls to 0 and 12. We'll take three minutes, come back, and get you the totals on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication 
to making your financial life easier together. So let's get to know each other because together is better. All roads lead to the new home of the realtors you've come to trust in our community, Bridge City Realty. Whether you're buying or selling property, contact our qualified staff of experienced professional salespeople at our offices, now located next door to Walgreens. We're right in the heart of Ottumwa at 301 West 4th, so stop by or call our new office line at 684-1234. Bridge City Realty, Southeast Iowa's number one real estate agency. Hi, this is Lisa Bittner, Clinic Manager at Mercy One Atoma Family and Internal Medicine Clinic. We specialize in geriatrics, internal medicine, family practice, and we see patients of all ages. We have an entire pediatrics team ready to serve you year-round. We also have quick care walk-in available Monday through Friday from 7 to 5. From babies to grandparents and everything in between, we are here for you at Mercy One Atoma Family and Internal Medicine Clinic. Your best life, our one purpose. Visit mercyone.org. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit Union, where it feels Hey, nice job clearing the clog. Thanks. You know anybody who could repair the water damage in my basement? Roto-Rooter does that. Do you guys fix water heaters? Roto-Rooter does that. How about a leaky faucet? We do that. Disposal repair? We do that. I've got to run a few errands, but if you could finish up those pies, that'd be great. Thanks. And away go troubles down the drain. Pies? Okay. Seasons change. Our priorities change. Your financial needs change. But there's one thing that remains consistent. Our dedication to making your financial life easier. Together. So let's get to know each other. Because together is better. Atumwa High Basketball, 12.40 a.m., 102.7 FM, KBIZ. Live video on the Atumwa Radio Group Facebook page. Our girls game in the books. All Atumwa tonight, literally. Atumwa 75, Des Moines East 3. Thought maybe we'd see a game like last year when Atumwa won by scores of 54-33 or 48-29. But, boy, Atumwa just got on a roll and East really could not find a way to generate anything offensively all night. So scoring for Atumwa... Camden Krause led the Bulldogs with 18. That all came in the first half. Nellie Morgan had 13 tonight for Ottumwa. Eight points for Briley Yeager, eight for Emma Hunger, seven for Riley Heinbaugh, seven for Hunter Caldwell, six for Veda Monahan, five points for Olivia Corum, three for Cameron Pauls. As all but one Ottumwa player got into the scoring column in tonight's game for East. Amanda Yang had two points, Tab of the Hockmuth had one. Otomo was 10 of 20 from the free throw line, East was one of two. So Otomo improves to five and five, they're now two and three in the Iowa Alliance South Division. East drops to 0 and 12, they are 0 and five in South Division play. Hope to talk to Bulldog head coach Joe Vandenberg about tonight's victory. Right now we'll take a three minute timeout. If coach is here, we'll chat with him right away. If he doesn't make it up here right away, we'll start talking about the boys game between Otomo and East. Three minutes and we're back on the Atomo Radio Sports Network. 
At Family First Chiropractic, it is our goal to get you and your family as healthy as possible and keep you healthy for the rest of your life. We deliver an elevated level of care for the entire family. We approach healthcare from a holistic view, incorporating multiple chiropractic techniques and physical therapy to ensure that our patients achieve the best results as fast as possible. We believe you deserve the best. A little preventative care now will eliminate pain management in later years. We want our kids to grow and live an active, healthy lifestyle. Get your family checked at Family First Chiropractic. It's time to choose the credit union with a new perspective. At Meridian Credit Union, we don't just see member profiles. We see people, people with goals, people who want to save more, people that we can help. That's why we offer financial services convenient to you. Great loan rates, online banking with bill pay, mobile banking, and credit cards. Join the many satisfied Meridian members today. See how our perspective can help you. Meridian Credit